Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another lesson. In the last lesson we made our print object fly at all times, and now we are going to make it able to collide with the target game object. In order to do that we need to add a rigid body and a collider also to the target game object. So click on add component, go to physics 2D and add a rigid body 2D to it. All of the default options should be fine, and now we need to add a collider. Click on add component, go to physics 2D and choose a circle collider 2D this time. It seems like it fits perfectly so we don't need to edit it. Also make sure you select the is trigger option to enabled. However if we click play our pin should pass through this and the target will fall down. So we need to go into the rigid body of the target, open constraints and make sure you freeze the X and Y position. The rotation should be fine since we want it to rotate but we don't want it to move from here because it's a fixed object. If we click play now it should stay into place, however the pin will still pass right through it. That means we need to solve this problem using a script of course. We will not be creating a new script, instead we will be doing that in the pin script as well. So open up the pin script and right here we have the start method and here we have the update method. However we are going to need another method for this. And it's going to be the on trigger enter 2D method. Make sure you select the 2D one. So whenever our pin collides with something, we want to check what object it collided with. We'll use if statements to test that. If collision dot tag equals to target. That means that our object collided with the target and we are going to execute this piece of code. However, if it didn't collide with the target, we want to check whether it collided with another pin. And for that we will use an else if statement now. Else if collision dot tag equals to pin. So in order to make this more simple, if the tag of the object that our pin collided with is the target, then we will be executing this code. If the tag of that object is not target, we want to check whether the tag is pin. And in case that's a pin, we want to execute this code. And we can write comments indicating that as well. If the pin collides with the target, we want to make it stop and snap to the target and kinda rotate with it. If it collides with the pin, that means it's game over. So let's write this piece of code first. As I said first we want to make the object stop. And it's only moving while this variable is true. So the easiest way to make it stop is to set it to false. After that we want to make the pin rotate with the target. The easiest way to do that is to make the pin a child of the target game object. And we can also do that in this code. So to make the pin a child of another game object, we will type in transform dot set parent and in the brackets we want to type in which transform becomes the parent of this object. It's going to be collision, so the object that we collided with dot game object dot transform. And this simple line of code will make the pin a child of the target, which will also make it rotate around it. And this should be everything for this part of the code. Let's move on to whenever the pin collides with another pin. For this we are going to need the scene management, so let's implement it. Using unity engine dot scene management. So if the pin collides with another pin, we simply want to change the scene to the game over scene. Scene manager dot load scene 
and the exact name of the scene is quick game over scene if I remember correctly. Let me just check. Quick game over scene, yep. Go back to the script, save it and then go back to Unity. Since the script is already attached, we don't need to do anything. We are simply going to try it out. So it snaps to the target perfectly. And let's try to make the pin hit another pin. So we are going to duplicate this by pressing Ctrl plus D on our keyboard. And we are going to move it a little bit behind this pin. So that it can hit it. And that should take us to the game over scene. Everything seems to be working fine. Let's get rid of this extra pin. And what we are going to do now is make this pin into a prefab. Simply take it from the hierarchy tab and drag it into the prefabs folder. And that's because we don't want this pin to start moving immediately or on its own. We want it to be moving only when we press our screen. And we are going to achieve that by instantiating this prefab once we press on the screen. So that means we don't need this pin here anymore and we can delete it. In the next lesson we will be making a script to spawn this pin when we want. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.